So our question of the day is, will this financial instability stop the Fed, stop the ECB, stop central banks? doing what they've been doing recently, which is aggressively raising rates. Joining us now to try and answer that question, Alberto Gallo, Chief Investment Officer and co-founder at Andromeda Capital Management. Alberto, is that the signal that we should be taking from the price action that we're seeing right now, particularly at the front end over in the United States and here in Europe? Central banks, ECB, Fed, you're done. It's a little early for them to stop. Um, the short answer is inflation is still going to be sticky. And what we're seeing is a uh, return to the real economy. You know, we had over a decade of um, free money, which funneled into cash park assets, you know, into crypto, into non-mark-to-market funds, uh, private equity, VC, tech, and very, very overvalued assets. And these things are being slowly marked to market now. Uh, but the real economy is fine. You know, the job market is strong. So, you know, we don't think that central banks should pause and, and call, it, uh, call it a day because of this. And um, <clears throat> we actually think that central bankers, by deploying more tools together with the U.S. Treasury, are still, will still be able to, to go for a few further hikes. Um, however, down the line, we can see that there is a lot more fragility in the financial system now than there was 10 years ago. So, mm -hmm. you know, they'll have to choose between growth uh, and, and inflation at some point. What, um, just to that point, uh, New York Fed's now saying their one-year inflation expectations fell to 4.2% versus 5. So that's like, yay, good news for the Fed taking a little bit of that inflation heat off. Alberto, when does that moment come? Um, just because they may not be cutting rates anytime soon doesn't mean they can't pause. When does the trade-off happen then, if you take a look at what we're seeing in the market? Look, the, uh, the real rate is slightly positive but you know we have seen across past cycles that we need to have a real rate of at least one percent uh, if not more for at least 12 months to calm down inflation so in our view we need to see you know before a real pivot we need to see an increase in unemployment which should at least go towards four percent if not more than four percent you know until then it is very difficult for the fed to you know break the emergency glass and start cutting rates so obviously you know bond markets are looking for that pivot um, and you know to some extent even equity investors hope for that pivot all the time um, but they might get disappointed and the move we see in rates today is extremely strong but there were also a lot of short positions that were caught off guard yeah. so I would I would say you know it's it's a bit overdone in rates today um, we definitely want to we definitely we're, we're calling for wider spreads and we are seeing that in credit and, and, and higher volatility. So would you be short, Alberto, of two years on either side of the Atlantic? I, we're seeing a similar story in Germany, France, to the United States. Would you be short of that move that we're seeing right now? Uh, you know, shorting rates now is, is tough uh, directionally. There's going to be vol, but definitely, uh, you know, at some point we'll be uh, positioning for, um, for no cuts. So, um, you know, we, we'll find a way with a limited loss to position for no cuts mm -hmm. um, with optionality. And also, I would say there's opportunities that always appear in credit markets when um, volatility comes up. And let's remember that, you know, credit markets are about the survival of companies. And um, even though there is some systemic risk in the banking system, you know, the Treasury and the Eurozone authorities here are very much focused on, on spending and supporting the, the real economy. Mm -hmm. So this does not mean we'll have a very strong default cycle. Um, there are some excesses in the financial system. There is fragility, and central bankers need to deflate those bubbles uh, without forgetting their mandate, which is inflation. Alberto, what about European banks? Um, we've seen a lot of sympathy trading. I was talking about a credit default swaps over at Credit Suisse. We also, Unicredit was halted for trading. Are, are there real problems with the European banking system? Is this like a 2011 situation again? Or like, are, is that in the clear and they're just getting taken down with the US? So look, there is um, an American portfolio manager made this joke. You know, what's the first thing that an alien does while landing on Earth? And it's to destroy a European bank. Uh, the reason is, there's nothing wrong with European banks. They're stronger, they have um, higher net income, but uh, somehow there's always some systemic exposures because it's still a very yeah. convoluted web of banks. There's still too many banks and they still have to consolidate. So essentially they, you know, they were a very crowded positive trade and it's repricing. We like the debt part of the capital structure. You know, we think that, <clears throat> 
we think that European banks will uh, potentially be volatile on the equity side, but with the, the sustainability, the credit side of the, of the European banks is still pretty solid and, and capital ratios uh, are much higher than they were 10 years ago. So we like the debt yeah. portion of, of that capital structure. Where in, where in the capital structure within the credit side would you want to go? Do you go to the cocoa end? Do you go a little further up? Where, are you, where do you think the best value is right now? It depends on the country, but there are countries where you, you, know, you get paid very well, for example, on senior debt, uh, up to 4 or 5% over risk-free, over bonds. And there's other countries which are more in the core part of Europe where you can go into sub debt and you get paid, you know, 5, 6%, 7%. So uh, generally we prefer to be across the safer part of the capital structures on senior debt in the periphery and we go down to the sub level in, um, in core. Let's remember that, you know, European governments are still spending at around 5% uh, even in 2023. The, the Eurozone stimulus is very, you know, didn't go with a big bang at the beginning, uh, but it continues to be strong at five percent this year so you know eurozone governments are supporting the banking system and the economy we'll see volatility for sure we want to hedge uh, with bank equities but eventually uh, you know the uh, the yield you're getting on, on bonds is pretty attractive um alberto bank deposits from what i understand are only guaranteed about a hundred thousand euros uh in europe if there is a kind of blow up like there was uh, with svb is there a government intervention, Will? Like, how do you look at the potential of something like that to ensure all deposits? And one of the things to note is that you know European banks have a much bigger um, capital uh, base, right? So in the case of SVB, you know the buffer before deposits was not very large, and deposits were very concentrated, and there were a lot of corporate deposits. So I don't think we have a situation yeah. like that in Europe. Um, even if you look at the, you know, the most corporate um, banks in Europe, they still have a very fragmented, very resilient deposit base. Um, should regulators increase the threshold for deposit guarantees? Yeah, I think that that would be a good measure, both in the US and the Eurozone. We had a lot of years where you know, inflation uh, has been you know, over target and the deposit threshold has remained the same. So we could have an inflation adjustment there. Uh, but I don't think there is such a concentrated example like SVB across the European banking system. Okay. Alberto, if you take a look, particularly at the peripheral banks right now, and look at where their capital was bought and what it is worth now, how negative do you think that number would be? If we did have a problem, and the Fed's tried to resolve this by basically buying everything at par, would that be something the ECB might have to think about as well? And how big a number could that be? So I would say here the the most important thing has been done, which is to backstop depositors. Um, in the US and in the European banking systems, but you know, there is a lot of fragmentation across the, the mid and, and small cap banks. So uh, what needs to happen is that there's simply too many banks. In some countries, you had more bank branches than restaurants, for example, until a few years ago. So there needs to be consolidation. And yeah. that's the only thing that um, solves the problem. And obviously, banks below 250 billion should be also regulated. So that, that's going to take some time. But ultimately, some of the risks, I would say, are outside of the banking system. They're in those assets that have not been marked, so private equity and private debt. Those are uh, areas that are outside the banking system that are not regulated, where um, the impact of higher interest rates has not fed true yet, because those funds don't mark to market. So that's where we can see um, you know, potential areas of fragility going forward.